immediately after my university education, I'm a graduate of political science from Madbello University area. I equally hold a master's degree in international relations from the University of Abuja. And equally my PhD in international relations from the University of Abuja. Prior to all this, uh, immediately after my youth service, I started as a teacher. I taught with uh, Islamic Training Centre Madala before I got appointment with a uh, free appointment with the National Orientation Agency. I uh, served the agency for seven years. Uh, and I used that opportunity to give back to my people. My last point of call before my sojourn to politics as the staff of the agency was Kuji Area Council. I came into Kuji in the year 2000 as a result of my redeployment from Abaji to Kuji as a principal orientation and mobilization of, of officer of the agency. I used that opportunity actually to give back to my people. I encourage students to, to go to school. I secure admission for students. In fact, I also what you might call uh, maybe probably a scholarship, but I, it wasn't like a standardized form of scholarship, but I ensure I secure admission for prospective students and of course assist them financially for registration and upkeep in various schools. I was doing that subconsciously, seeking for the grace of the Almighty. And consciously or unconsciously, I became noticed. And I think that's what actually uh, prompted my people uh, that gave me that clarion call to represent them as the executive chairman of Abaji. Before then, I was not into full-fledged politics, but of course, uh, as humans, we are all political animals, and one way or the other, you have some elements of aligning with one former political party or the other. But full-fledged political participation was when this clarion call came in 2007, contested the election for the first time against an incumbent chairman, and of course, uh, we won the election. I won the primaries, I won the general elections and all that. So that's how I got myself into politics. Well, uh, if you are talking about the challenge um, as an executive chairman of uh, any local government anywhere in Nigeria, it has to do with funding. You have uh, thousands, um, some cases, millions of people as your subject, you know, and uh, with little resources to cater for the myriads of challenges that are before you. But fortunately for us in the federal capital, long before the current administration brought about uh, autonomy to local governments. Uh, the area councils in the federal capital territory, so to say, are autonomous, to a larger extent autonomous. Our resources are not being tampered with. Uh, so we had um, virtually what uh, is due for us as area councils, even though it's still it's not enough, but we were able to utilize it. It was like a competition amongst area council chairmen then, uh, my colleagues, the likes of late uh, Dalade Suji of blessed memory, uh, we have people like uh, a current minister uh, of special duties, Zafani Adisalu. You have uh, colleagues like uh, Shazi in Kuali. And of course, you have Smoli uh, of blessed memory from Bari Area Council. And my, myself, it was uh, so to say, like, and then we have the Kirangulu, uh, partly in Guagulada, and um, yes. So it was a very big competition among the city and county chairmen. And the Minister of State then, Senator Jean, uh, John James Apano uh made it a point of duty to commission projects in all the six area councils. So that was 
healthy competition amongst the six area councils where projects are commissioned almost in monthly or by monthly basis. So that gave us the edge to perform and that's why you can go during our days as, we, as I speak with you, you can go to area councils and still see uh, 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 evidence, evidences of the uh, performances then. For example, one of the roads I constructed, almost about a 17 kilometer road, up to now, the road is still evident. Yes. Uh, and lots of other projects that we actually executed uh, scattered across the new crannies of the wards in our respective area councils. The other challenge uh, then, of course, the security challenge actually never started now. Then we had these security challenges, but not at the level at which we have them now. Then we never knew much about uh, kidnapping. It was a case of pipeline vandalization, uh, which I nipped in the bud. You have uh, farmers had us classes, which actually had been in existence even before we were born. Uh, so these are some of the security challenges we had then. And then cross-border crimes. Cross-border crimes, uh, people commit crimes and then run into other lo local governments in another state. And then you have challenge of communicating with another DPO who will tell you that uh, it's not subservient to you, it's, uh, it's, it's in a different state, you have to go through the commissioner of police. So I initiated G7 uh, uh, security committee of local governments, uh, you know, uh, beyond the federal capital territory, which has to include Kotokerfi in Wagi local government, and then uh, Tutu local government in Nasarawa, Gurara local government in, uh, in Niger, and so on and so forth. So we initiated this, and I think that actually helped a lot. Uh, there was free flow of information and communication amongst the DPOs then, and of course, as well as the area council chairman. So we were able to use our G7 local government uh, committee, security committee. We, I think I remember also we bought sizable number of motorcycles to the vigilantes, and we were able to nip these security challenges in the boat. And these are initiatives today that are lacking. If you know local governments can come together in the terms of security, uh, believe me, we give, give this country average of two months to overcome these security challenges like in the Let local government pull resources together to face this battle. Believe me, these rascals will be given uh, 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 what actually the the the, the is, is, is uh, yeah. So uh, uh, the initiatives are not there. People are aspiring to offices just for the sake of uh, earning some uh, more primitive capital accumulation. No initiative to face security challenge. It's appalling.